Tapes. Okay, we are live. Welcome, as always, to Mentionables TV. Today, we're looking at the fifth installment in our 15-part series dealing with questions that no Christian can answer. These questions come from the non-sequitur YouTube channel, which I am now told is not an atheist channel. Nevertheless, they posted a video with 15 atheist arguments that no Christian could possibly answer. Today is the fifth uh, argument, and it sounds like this. Cheers. A variety of religions, from ancient Greek beliefs to Native American beliefs, both past and current, account for gods that have relationships with their believers and with their servants. Why do you feel like the relationship that you claim to have with Jesus Christ is somehow special or unique and somehow invalidates how all other believers feel about their God? The thing that sets Christianity apart as a belief system, from a relational standpoint, is distinctly tied to the person of Christ. It is not God's ability to interact with people that is unique. It is the nature of salvation that's unique. In the majority of religions that believe in interactive gods, it's the human's job to do something or bring something to the table to make themselves right with God. Work your way to heaven, if you will. However, in Christianity, the price for restoring the relationship with God has already been paid through Jesus. It's not based on any work you can do to bring yourself to God. The work is already accomplished, much like the reflection we see in human relationships. Love is not something that can be earned or paid for. True love must be both freely given, although it's important to note that's not always without a high personal cost to one party, and it must be accepted on the other side if the relationship's to be cultivated. Other religions offer a give-and-take nature that is not a true reflection of a loving relationship. It's for this reason that the loving relationship seen through Jesus in Christianity offers a very distinct and different perspective on love and on the personal relationship with this higher power that we do not see in other religions. So this question sounds a lot like the question two in this series, which essentially asked if there are so many religions out there, how do you know that yours is the correct one? Or why would God allow so many religions if he's the one true God? This one is a little bit more about the specific relationship between humans and their gods in any given religion. So it's asking uh, what makes the relationship of the Christian and Jesus any different between the relationship that other religions have with the men and gods of those religions. So it's essentially operating off this idea that all religions are basically the same. And if one studies religions, you can see that's patently untrue, because each religion builds a model of reality, and it tries to explain well, essentially everything, but more specifically the abstracts, the metaphysical things that we see in the world. So like, where does beauty come from? Where does morality come from? Where does purpose and destiny come from? And each religion strives to define these things as they were. So when you look at that, the purpose and uh, goal that each religion sets for its adherence is very different. So what makes it different than the other religions? There's a lot of things that make it different than the other religions. So your more Eastern religions, your more pantheistic religions, there is no real relationship between God and man because God is man and man is God. So the goal, the destiny, is not to attain so much a relationship with God as to become God. You recognize the Godness within you and you merge with that in a transcendent standard. So in Buddhism, for instance, your idea is to extinguish the self and merge with the godness of the universe. In Hinduism, it is to build up karma so that eventually you reincarnate to the point of godhood yourself. So there's really no relationship between God and man in these 
Eastern religions because man is God. In your more polytheistic religions, your more pagan religions, the relationship between God and man is the relationship between ruler and subject because in these pagan religions there is no real transcendent, there's just the powerful and the super powerful. So for instance gods actually live in locations and have physical bodies and they can wander around in different forms and impregnate women and things like that. So because these are physical beings inside the universe, they're essentially just very, very powerful creatures. And the relationship between man and God is an incidental relationship between somebody who lords power over them in a physical universe and then less physical beings who have to be subject to that power. And if you don't have a particular relationship, if you don't engage with that particular God, there is no real relationship. In your monotheistic religions, which are essentially Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, there is then this idea of a transcendent creator God that lives outside of the universe and is in control of everything within the universe. So this is a very more specific relationship between God and man. So in Judaism, you have God. The God is the God of the Jews. The destiny is specifically the Jews. And eventually, when their Messiah comes and Israel is given the land and all things are made right by God, then Israel will be this, the first of the nations and they will be the blessing to the rest of the earth. So there's this destiny, but it specifically relates to the Jews. In Islam, you have a all-powerful God and this God sets particular standards and you either live up to the standards or you don't. If you live up to the standards, you get the blessing. If you don't live up to the standards, you go to hell, essentially. So it's this very good people go to heaven, and by good you have to adhere, you have to hit all these benchmarks that Allah sets for you. So what makes Christianity different? Well, in Christianity, God became man, and then God removed any obstacle between the relationship of man and God in the person of Jesus Christ, who took on the burden of all the benchmarks, all the good living that we could not do. We just don't have the capacity to do it. It's too hard, essentially. But Jesus did it, and then Jesus took on all the flaws of humanity and the judgment that humanity would have, and therefore men can be reconciled with God because men can be made perfect through Christ. So in Christianity, the idea is that you don't have to do the work. God did the work for you. And this isn't just a convenient excuse to escape moral living. This is just credit to God. It shows how superior God is because God did both ends of the job. He both created and then he fulfilled the purpose for which he created. And then he gives that as a gift to you. So in terms of grace and love, Christianity is clearly superior to all of these because you don't have to do the work. You merely have to accept the work that was done for you. Now, it takes some humility to do that, but all one has to do is humble oneself, and then the work is done, and you live in light of the forgiveness and love that was given to you. So... That's what makes Christianity different and one's relationship with Christ different than the other religions. So the idea here is that other religions have um, gods that claim some kind of relationship with their believers, right? And how is this relationship then with Jesus unique? You know, why, why is it different than all these other relationships with all these other gods? Well, the defining characteristic is the fact that Jesus is real. But that's what really what it comes down to. The issue we have to consider is not whether or not someone's feelings of their relationship with their God is valid. I don't even know what that means for a feeling to be valid. A feeling is valid, it seems to me, if it accurately reflects reality. Right? If, if somebody says something to you and you misunderstand what they said and you get angry, is your anger valid? No, because you're mad for no reason. Nothing actually happened for you to be angry about. It's an invalid emotion. Stop feeling that way. It's no big deal. You misunderstood. Here's what I really meant. 
oh, okay, I'm sorry, my bad, right? It's not a valid feeling because it's not grounded in reality. So obviously, as a Christian, I believe that Jesus is real. He's a real person, a real historical figure for whom we have historical evidence for his life, his death, his burial, and yes, I believe his resurrection. But that's a whole other conversation. And the relationship that I have with Christ is real regardless of how I feel about it at any given time. Right? Just like my relationship with my wife, just because I may not... Maybe, maybe we go through a slump. Maybe it's just one of those periods of time where we're so busy, we're just kind of like ships passing in the night, and we just don't really feel like there's much of a relationship anymore. What well, does matter how I feel? I'm still married. She's still my wife. And in the same way, your feelings about the relationship don't actually determine the truth or validity of the relationship. The truth of a religion is not determined by how you feel. It's determined by the facts. It's determined by the evidence, by what is actually true. What invalidates these other religions, these other relationships, is the fact that they are based on things that are not true. These gods do not exist. So just because, and this is, I think this is really where it gets down to as a Christian, um, just because some people who uh, have these other beliefs seem to feel the same way you do, that they seem to, it's like, well, you know, they seem to have a relationship with their God um, that is, you know, sometimes even looks more real than my relationship with my God. Well, rather than determining truth based on your feelings or the seeming of what you see in someone else, examine the evidence. Look at what is actually true and what is real rather than feelings. Feelings are useful. Feelings kind of help us sometimes when you're scared. That's a feeling that lets you know, uh-oh, there's something to watch out for, right? When you're angry, that's a feeling that lets you know, hey, I have been wrong. This needs to be addressed. But feelings can lie, right? Anyone who's been around a 15-year-old girl who was in love knows that feelings can lie, right? And so just because you feel something doesn't mean it's true. Actually examine what is the truth of the matter, and the reason that we can say, I have a relationship with Christ that is real and true and these others are not is because Christ is real and true. These other guys don't actually exist. This question by Luciano Gonzalez is basically the same question as question, question three, but it's framed slightly different. So let's see if I can give a brief answer that doesn't just repeat my answer from before. Okay. In parody, every human has also claimed to have a relationship of some kind with their mother. So why do you feel that the relationship you have with your mother is somehow special or unique? Okay, parallel claims do not invalidate personal ones. That's just obviously true. I also don't think that it's my relationship with Jesus, which actually just as an aside, I find that a really weird turn of phrase that really is an unbiblical concept and reflects a, a kind of strange sentimentalistic romanticism of the modern seeker sensitive evangelism, uh, evangelicalism rather than really a biblical concept. So, but, but that aside, whatever that relationship is, which is probably more of a covenantal thing, I don't think that whatever it is, that that's what's invalidate how other religious persons feel about their gods. I think the falsity of their belief does that on its own.